Dennis. I'm Dennis House. Elections are being held in your cities and towns in 16 days. And with us today to talk about that is Nancy Wyman. She is the chairwoman of the Connecticut Democratic Party. And J.R. Romano, he is the chairman of the state Republican Party. And we thank you both for being with us here today. Thanks and Mr. Romano, us. I'll begin with you first. Why should people vote in an off-year election? A lot of people say, well, it's just my town election. Well, actually, the, the local elections have the biggest impact on uh, individuals, property tax, uh, are your roads being plowed? Are they being paved? Uh, what's the financing of a local community? So it, actually, local elections have the biggest impact on an individual um, on a day-to-day -day basis. B Board of Education, these are all things you know where your children are going to school. So it, it matters a lot. Do you find the apathy as well when you go out there? We do. But the truth is, more and more now, I think, uh, people are coming out to vote for this local election. I've seen more excitement as I've traveled around the state um, this year where there's more diversity in the tickets at the, at the local level. People are talking a lot more about it. It is, though, I have to say, the hardest job I ever had was being on the Board of Education um, because everybody knows what you do. And you're constantly being picked on to, say, to being asked about, what, my, what about my child? What about this? So I, I really admire those local people that are running for local election. You mentioned diversity and, and about five years ago I had you on the program and you said that you wanted to see more women running for office. Are you mm -hmm. finding that? We are seeing more women on both sides of the aisle running for office. Um, we had the biggest election for us and uh, for nationally of women, um, um, Democrat and Republican, in Congress this past year. And what we're seeing at the local level, more and more women are getting involved. And more and more people of color are getting involved, which is really exciting to, to see. Uh, the balance. As you look across the state, Mr. Romano, do you see the potential for any Republican pickups? Absolutely. Uh, th there's a major controversy in Fairfield right now. Mike Tetro is uh, facing a lot of scrutiny. He's, he's over the last five years, there's been some uh, issues with the Parks and Rec Department where they actually, I don't want to use the word toxic, but I don't know how else to describe it, where I think it's still six fields or kids can't play on them. There was some um, backfill that was uh, not supposed to be there. Uh, and then the re the remediation fund that was supposed to be meant to clean up the parks, Mike used a little of it for image consulting. Uh, so there's, I think Fairfield's a tremendous opportunity for us. Uh, we have a great candidate in Brenda Kupchak, speaking of, of a, a, a potential female uh, first select one. And uh, I think that's one to watch. And what about some Democratic pickups in some traditionally I, Republican towns? I, I think we have a good chance in Madison right now um, to, to pick up a seat there. Um, East Haven. We have a, a great chance of going. There are some of them open seats, um, but I, I do see that uh, the, there are a lot of new towns that are coming into more of from switching from blue to red or red to blue. And I think we're going to see if we can balance that out. It'll, it'll it'll tell us a lot later on. What about days. New Britain? Mayor Aaron Stewart, a Republican, is up for re-election there, and Democrats would love to get that seat back. Yeah. What are the chances? Yeah, she, I think the, her opponent is working as hard as he possibly can. Uh, Aaron, uh, I can't say she's uh, she's a great great mayor and stuff like that. She's a great friend to me, but uh, I know this is a young man. He was, really wants to get in there and, and do something different, and so he's working as hard as he possibly can. And, of course, we have to also look at the fact that we want to get the rest of the slate in. So it's just not the mayor's position. It really is across the whole line of, of getting the Board of Education, planning and zoning. That, as J.R. said, those are so important issues that are so close to home that we want to make sure that it's in the right hands of people. I, I want to ask you about cities because a little bit later in the program, we're running some 50-year-old film of Ann Ucello. She mm -hmm. was the last Republican to be elected mayor in the capital city. And there are some who blame Democrats for the the decline in Connecticut cities. And if you look at the population when she was mayor, it was 158,000 people in Hartford down to 124,000 now. And it has been 50 years of Democratic rule. Do you blame Democrats for the decline? Well, I mean, listen, there's a lot of uh, uh, problems um, in Hartford. Obviously, property taxes are some of the highest in the state. Um, it, the, the, where the state's fiscal health also uh, attributes to the fact that it's harder for Hartford to draw in businesses. They'd rather uh, do business in other cities. This is supposed to to be our flagship city. Um, I, there's no question in my mind, 50 years of Democrat leadership, uh, you see uh, Hartford's constantly in fiscal crisis. Uh, they don't know how to manage their books. 
And so, you know, yeah, if you look at why education is, is the quality of education is poorer, um, crime is higher, th these are direct results of local policies uh, that have impacted the community. Yeah, you Chairwoman know, Wyman, do you agree with that statement? You know, yeah. Should Democrats take some of the blame? I think, no, I don't think so. I think what they have to be is the individuals. It's not the, the Democrats. But I, what I do see is what the difference is from where we were 50 years ago, where people lived in the city wanted to stay in the city, where we had much more, you know, uh, uh, shopping in the city. And then all of a sudden, what you saw happen, everybody's moving to the suburbs. So what, those people that can't move to the suburbs are staying in the city. And that's, that's a smaller margin of people, of course, and they're, they're poorer. And so I think, you know, when you look at uh, the mayors and, and what they've done in the city, they have tried to work it out. We, we see what Luke Bronin is doing right now and how he's changing things and what we've seen growth in our city. It, it, it's tough being the capital city. It's tough because we, can, we, don't, we, don't, we don't tax ourselves as a state, and so we're not paying any taxes to the to the local cities. There has been criticism over the years that Republicans don't take these city races very seriously and they don't often yield a candidate or, you know, field a candidate rather. Uh, you know, New Haven, traditionally Democratic city, probably will elect another Democrat. Hartford will elect another Democrat. What's your response to that? Well, listen, the, the numbers are overwhelming. Uh, I think one of the things that, that is often difficult, and, and I just want to touch on the point, uh, the governor's absolutely correct where populations are shrinking and people are moving outside, but, but that's because of the property tax cost, the cost of doing business in Hartford, the cost of doing business in New Haven, and that is a driving factor, right? Economics is a driving factor of what quality of education, of why people leave the city. Republicans would love the opportunity to lead a city like Hartford, New Haven, or Bridgeport, but Democrats oftentimes won't give us the opportunity when we do run. I'm going to use Aaron Stewart as a prime example. We are outnumbered nine to one in that city, and Aaron has done a tremendous job leading that city. It is it is now growing, grand list. They actually delivered a zero uh, tax increase budget. I don't know. The, I couldn't tell you last time Hartford or New Haven ever did that. Um, but this is the the biggest difference. Where if Republicans are given an opportunity to lead, we will, and we'll we'll fix the problems that Democrats create. You know, two big. Just re respond once, uh, and I want to be clear about this. The problem, the difference in in New Haven to um, to Hartford and to other cities. Hartford has all our state buildings, in it, and they don't pay any taxes to the to this town. The but they had them 50 years ago. Someone would say. Yeah, and and the problem was is that now we how else do they raise money unless the state comes in and gives them more money? How do they raise their money to? But but. Nancy, and again, I'm just going to point out, I think New Britain has about 53% of its properties non-taxable between Central Connecticut University, charities, churches, same with New Haven. You have every every city, major city, has that problem. That, And particularly, I know for a fact, New Britain has over 50% of the property uh, is, is tax-free like Hartford, or at least close to it. Hartford may be the largest, but every major city struggles with that when you're dealing with the universities, when you're dealing with hospitals. And so it is not a unique problem to Hartford. What's unique is the, un, the the Democrats' unwillingness to cut anything, right? It's always growing government and, and things of that nature. And that's just my, my personal opinion, and you can just look at the numbers. Yeah, right, I don't, then don't, don't look at the budget in New Britain, then, because if you looked at last year's budget and the big increase that had to go into New Britain, then they had a big property tax increase. They in also didn't get a $100 million bailout like Hartford did. That's true. So. That's true. If Aaron yeah. had to solve it herself. All right, no, I don't know if she did. But, let's yeah. move on to our next <laughs> facet of this, of this conversation. You both have to defend two people who aren't terribly popular right now. And one is the governor, Governor Lamont. His approval ratings lately have been pretty low. You talk to some local city leaders, town leaders. They're upset that the bonding has been cut back under his debt diet. Do you think that will hurt candidates this year? I don't think so. I really don't. I think the candidates that uh, are at the local level uh, people aren't going to relate that to, to Governor Lamont. And I have to say that as people really learn what's going on with under the Lamont administration, I, I think they're going to see changes. I think people are going to start to understand what the governor wants to do. And the governor really does want to do the same things that everybody else talks about, is this debt diet. We, we're drowning in debt. 
and you have an uh, unpopular president who's now going through impeachment proceedings, and people voted against him through their Republicans in the last statewide election. What do you think is going to happen this year? Well, well just a point of clarification, the, it's an impeachment inquiry, which means it wasn't voted on. The Democrats did it in secrecy. They wouldn't let Republicans in the last hearing. But at the end of the day, what, what I think has happened is, is a lot of wealthier Connecticut residents and, and, and people who are more interested in paying attention to Washington, D.C. in the last election uh, got bit. Uh, the Democrats, once they won these seats, raised sales tax by about 15 percent. They raised digital download tax by about 635 percent. They raised the I mean, all these tax increases now has impacted hardworking families. And what's happening is, is candidates are hearing that at the doors. They're upset. I want to move on to a you know, question I want to throw it to both of you, and that is, what are you two going to do together to make Connecticut matter in the next presidential primary season? Right now, we have one of the tail end of the primary season. I think it's April 26th of next year. There might be one candidate on each side left. The candidates come into Connecticut to collect money. Joe Biden's coming here this weekend. He's not going to have a rally. The, you know, these candidates come to Connecticut, yet they don't go after the voters here. What can we do to make our state matter? Who wants to take this first? Well, I, part, part of the problem is, is the legislature loves to legislate, and this, is, this has been codified in law when our primaries are. But you uh, could testify. You could make a push. It, it won't matter. So okay. what I personally believe is, is we are actually looking into suing the state of Connecticut to, for the right to control our ballot access. Uh, we're, we're putting together a team of lawyers together to how we do our process. Uh, there's federal case law that actually mandates how each party uh, maintains and, and, and gives their ballot access. To candidates, so we're, we're actually that's the only way it's going to change in the state of Connecticut. Uh, passing legislation like this would would be very difficult. Why should people in Connecticut be less valuable, though, or less important than people in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada, and uh, uh, 25 other states? I don't disagree by any means. The the reason in, uh, that we can't change it right now is because of agreements in different states with the with the Republican Party of. How are we going to change this? So there are, and we can lose some of our delegates if it's changed right away. So that's one of it. it is but for 2024, you could work on it. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, Let's personally, if, if we lose some delegates to make voters matter a little bit more, I'm okay with that for the convention because it's, it's just the convention are just codifying the primaries anyway. But I, I think the only way to change it is to sue. Nancy Wyman, yeah. Jay Romano, good Thank to see you in the program. Thank you.